What are some ways artists can make money with their music? That's what I'm trying to yeah, figure out Let us myself. know, guys. Let us know when you find that out. It's um, hard out here. Yeah. In this economy? Let girl. us know when anybody finds out, please. <laughs> What's up guys? I'm Rahma and I'm an artist from LA. How did you first meet? I found her on TikTok in 2020, pandemic time. Yes. And around 2020, there weren't as many South Asian artists just doing the thing, you know? I felt like there was no one with a developed look, feel, brand, sound. But when I saw you, I was like, oh, this girl, she knows what she's doing. So I hit her up on Instagram on some like really existential shit. I was like, I wonder if you feel the way I feel about being an artist. And yeah. I hope you weren't weirded out by that. No, um, I but we were homies ever since. Literally. We didn't even have like a, we didn't have a proper meeting. We just did a little digital meet yeah. and did a call. Yeah. And you were just talking about everything that I was also going through, but just in a different phase of my life. like just the tiring journey of being an artist and how unrewarding it can be, but it's like, oh, I love this, so I have yeah. to keep doing it and I have to keep trying. I feel like I just really resonated with you as a human mm. before I resonated with you even as an artist, which was really important to me, so. Facts. Wow, what a trip down memory lane. What is your music making process like? Does it happen all at once or in stages? I would say my music making process is very sporadic. Like I have to come up with ideas very spontaneously, but I don't really complete an idea until like way down the line. Yeah. Like I'll create the first feeling, like whether it's the lyrics, the production, like we'll, we'll figure it out like in the first feeling. And it's kind of like trying to trying to redo that first feeling is always so hard. So I like to come back to it very, very long from the moment that I've made it so I have a very fresh perspective. Yeah. And I add more lightning to it. It's not just like... Yeah, it needs time to marinate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I like sit on music for like two years before I drop it if I want to. Like, you know, I feel like... Yeah, same. You relate. Like, same. Tell me about your scope. For me, it's very similar. I will like conceptualize a song I'll start on it yeah but the lyrics kind of come to me in pieces I don't like to force myself to sit down and write something yeah. if I have a thought I'll put it down and then I'll get back to it whenever the inspiration strikes again yeah yeah what when do you feel like that inspiration comes like is it a couple weeks or is it just random like it might be a day after like it's very sporadic sometimes it's the next day sometimes it's like a year later yeah so you just, you just gotta trust the process. Just gotta figure it out. Yep. That's yep. how it goes. Do you judge someone more based on their music taste or their horoscope zodiac sign? Music taste, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's because, so I come from a Hindu family, right? Okay. So astrology is like forced down our throat mm -hmm. all the time. Like, yeah, you told oh, me Oh, you can't release this on Tuesday because something something superstitious super, yeah yeah and it's like kind of controls your life a little bit mm -hmm. so i am just so sick of astrology and like it dictating when and when i can't do something so yeah. i'm more on like music taste do we align on favorite artists sound what's like a red flag if someone's listening to something a red flag honestly would be not having a diverse palette yeah like if you only listen to one type of music What's going on? Yeah, like what kind of person are you? Like, do you so venture admitting. outside your comfort zone? You know, like literally. <laughs> then again, maybe people find everything in one genre, you know? You never know. Yeah. I don't. I don't either. I don't. I need a little bit of everything to feel exactly. like a real person. <laughs> exactly. And I think I have more meaningful relationships with people who put me on. Exactly. So if you can't put me on to something I don't know, it just, it doesn't go that far. Exactly. Like. I feel like it's expensive that way. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Absolutely. What is your favorite song of mine? <laughs> My favorite song of yours? Ooh, it's between two. Hypnotic 
and bad news. Okay, I love that. I, yes. Hypnotic ended up in my Spotify wraps as like my top five. So I love that. I was blasting. You were blasting that shit. I was shit. blasting. I let, the, I let the people know. Let the ego boost, girl. Yeah, it was, it was too good. It was okay, too wait, good. my favorite song of yours? Yeah. Envy? She's an oldie but a goodie. Shut up. Envy and from the new. Ooh. I think Burn It to the Ground. Burn It to the Ground? Okay, solid. Those choice. are my two. What are some ways artists can make money with their music? That's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. Let us myself. know, guys. Let us know when you find that out. It's um, hard out here. Yeah. In this economy? Let girl. us know when anybody finds out, please. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I have. I have no answers because Google what you make off a Spotify stream. <laughs> the disappointment. The disappointment. Oh my god! And you know what is so fucked? What? So this is Go. my first time experiencing like success in India, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of my streams are now coming from India. Yeah. Tell me why I didn't know that if you have a lot of streams from India, you get paid less per stream. Oh. For a million streams in yeah. the US, let's say like you get paid out like four to five K, right? Yeah. If you have a million streams in India, it's like half that. True. You get paid out half that amount. You get like 2.5 ish to 3K. Come on guys, do yeah. better. Do better. We like, deserve your money, I promise. I, I think as an artist, <laughs> if you're up and coming, we deserve your, give us your money. Please give us your money. <laughs> oh. Spotify, we love you, man. Give us your money. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly kind of sucks. The, the creator economy right now, especially for musicians, like you don't make money off your art. Like you have to get famous from your music and sell other shit to make money. Yeah. Even touring is not really it's that not profitable ROI. of an industry exactly. anymore. Exactly. Um, commercials, if people want, commercials? if you're just starting out, like yeah. I would just do commercials and like do commercial work as much as you can, like make little jingles. Like I always used to wonder this, like I could make like a 30 second jingle for a commercial and make like thousands of dollars and I'd be like, well, that was weird. That was like no work at all. But then my dad like was like, actually, no, like you spent years perfecting your work to the point where you could just like output it in 30 uh -huh. seconds. So yeah. you, d you get that. Exactly, work. exactly. So, so yeah, do that. Commercial work like film, sync, licensing. Uh, I do think like performing for certain events, like not schools. necessarily schools, like colleges will pay a lot of money. Yeah, for they would love that. Uh, but other than that, I don't know what to tell you because you're probably not going to make any money off your music. I'm still trying. I've been doing it for eight years. <laughs> And I'm in debt. I'm not actually in debt, but I haven't really made a penny from my music, so. Yeah, there's not like that like immediate or like extensive like return that we've received as yeah. artists. And I don't even think any artists who are even up there feel that yet. Yeah, you know? there is a huge threshold if you're an artist to start making sustainable money right. and a sustainable living. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be like in the stratosphere to make something that feels comfortable and modest. Exactly. For the average artist, for the average creator, even if you have like millions of streams under your belt, like you are probably still somewhat struggling yeah. to make ends meet. I personally like have a corporate job outside of music to help like fund my life because music alone would not cut it. So take that all in stride. <laughs> Yeah. If you're an artist, basically what I'm trying to say, if you want to be an artist, is there anything else you could do? Like, is there anything else that you like that you might want to do? Because being an artist <laughs> is really hard. Pookie is really hard. Okay. <laughs> but it'll be worth it. It's if worth it. If you love it. If it's that's the it. one you choose, it'll be worth it. Do songs need music videos? How do you choose which song has a video? I'm a huge proponent of building the visual world. You and I both are. Yeah. Uh, I do think songs need a visual world around them. Yeah. Because, for example, the song I released recently, Tere Bina, majority of people thought it was just like a sweet little love song and yeah, they were dancing like, to this like, ooh, yeah. like, girl, this is about death and calamity. Exactly. And you wouldn't have known unless you saw the music video and saw the thunder and the blood and like the, the imagery and the scenery. So I think building a world around your song is really, really important. And in terms of which song to pick, I think that's up to the artist. It's a very like internal, personal. it's a personal internal thing. However, from a business standpoint, I think just in terms of where I am as an artist, I usually do make videos for songs that have 
some level of traction just so there's like some type of ROI to it. Right. But that's just because I get stuck in my business mind a little too much. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think you gotta get your bag. Sometimes you just gotta get your bag. But <laughs> I would say it's a personal thing. And yes, songs do need videos. What about you? I agree, of course. Right. And I think it, I said this on my Instagram, but I think building like your team early on, like even if it's just your friends, like put your people on and move horizontally before you try to go vertically. That's so true. The artist's journey is really difficult if you keep looking up. That is so you true. You just gotta look side to side, you know? Yeah. Put your people on, like it's literally my sister, my homies, my fucking friends. Like it's just always gonna be like that, I think. Yeah. It's even you, like working with you, you're like one of the three people on my project because like I fuck with you as a human first. Yeah, yeah. And then everything works out after that. And I feel like people see that, like the mm -hmm. genuine kinetic exactly. energy that is our artistic process together rather than alone. Like it's more powerful. You know what I mean? It's like Amen. Z -z -z -z. Oh. Amen. It's working. <laughs> yep. It's it's more about like community and like making that authentic relationship and presenting it to the world. I feel like that goes so much farther than and you like- just, And you wanna be around people who understand your vision early on. Exactly. Cause then elevating it from there is like- Yeah, much easier process. Exactly. Much easier. It's like, now it's just getting other people to like jump in and see how they can help, you know? Cause you already have that solid yeah. squad of people. It's I nice. feel like it's really exciting to see you like put out consistently and like put out your visuals consistently because it does give you so much reward. Like people see more of Shreya within the world of other people. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's not even just you alone anymore. And it's just like, a, I think having a team is, is beautiful to watch because as you succeed, everyone around you starts succeeding as well. Yeah, it's and like a you guys, yeah. The forward motion is like collective instead of just you going up this ladder alone. Exactly. It's so much more fruitful. Exactly. What is your favorite way to connect with your fans? Is live. it DMs, like comments, polls? No, live? it's live music because that's like how I started music, performing, um, just being a singer, you know, you know yeah. the joke. Performance is like my forte. I feel like on a stage when I get to see everybody and like we sing together, like that's when I feel. It feels good. So real. Otherwise nothing feels real. But I love it, like I love a little comment section jargon yeah yeah yeah. is just that like the word that, the little comment camaraderie of yeah. everyone just like i love that shit but live music is where it's at for me for you i'm yeah i would say live music because i just feel like the digital world feels like a black hole mm -hmm. it just gets so um consuming and it starts to feel surreal like with, with my recent song, it's, it's gotten a lot of traction, but I haven't been able to see what that looks like, like in person. What does yeah. that many number look like? Exactly. Like that large ass number? What, what does it look like when you put it in a stadium? Like Exactly. So when it comes to connecting with people, DMs, comments, it just starts to feel like it's all numbers mm -hmm. and it's not real people. So live music and like being able to connect with an audience in person feels so much more rewarding because yeah. you can like exchange energies with each other and you can see like how much an audience really resonates with you. Yeah. Cause like a uh, slay mommy, slay mother, like only goes so far in your brain. But yeah. to see someone like reciting your song bar for bar, mm -hmm. that just does something to your soul. So true. And yeah. then it probably like when you do that experience, it revitalizes, revitalizes the way you look at it. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, the internet like it's like damn the weight like and we can't even process it because it's so much information yeah it's, it's overwhelming not, it's not real like that it's, world is not real or tangible so we live can't music. hold it in our hands yeah so live music is where it's at how important is it to have a manager or an agent i am the perfect person to speak on this tell me i have been doing music for eight years yes this year was the first year I got management. And I do not know what the hell I was doing without management all these years before. Honestly, I don't know either. I don't know what I was doing or how I managed. 
I think in the inception phases of a music career. You held it down though. I tried, I tried my best. I think like in the inception phases, maybe it's not as necessary to have management like while you're building your sound and figuring out who you are. But once you're putting music out into the world and it's receiving traction, like it's really important to have a solid management team around you. To that keep can, it up. Yeah, it's just part of your infrastructure as an artist. Without management, I would be so disorganized. Like management helps you keep up with um, all the outreach that people are, you know, like mm -hmm. trying to get to you. So shows, um, keeping up with like royalties, keeping up with all these little nuanced things that you shouldn't have to keep up with as a, as a creative. It's really important to have management. And I feel like for every artist out there, if you are at a point where like, Oh, music's picking up for me. Like I'm starting to get a lot of streams. No, <laughs> I was just talking to the camera. Oh. <laughs> but if you are an artist and you feel like your career is starting to pick up and you're starting to get a little bit of traction and this is something you want to pursue, I would highly, highly advise you to get management that sees your vision um, and that wants to build with you. Yeah, that would be my advice. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Right? Right on. Especially as for you, your manager is like your sister, right? Yeah. So having that level of intimacy in, in, in a managerial relationship is such a comforting and like safe feeling. Yeah. Because this industry is really harsh. It's, it's weird, man. It's abrasive. People are weird. They're dodgy. It's I, super weird here, but yeah. being around genuine people especially on the business side is so beneficial like yeah. you're saying and even me and my sister you know we figured it out from the beginning so we had to go through those like mm -hmm. dodgy people and that weird world by ourselves like with no help and it was like pretty crazy but you're right how how much of an impact it has on you like yeah what impact have your parents had on your career Ooh, that's a good one like everything i do musically in my career is first for my family, for my parents, you know. Um, I feel like the biggest thing for me was putting my community on since I was a kid. And I'm still doing that and I love doing that. But now it's like such a reckoning because it's like, oh my God, like no one, <laughs> <laughs> no one is, is going to ever completely make someone proud. You know what I mean? Like yeah. brown parents are so hard to please, but I'm so grateful that I came to a point like musically where they're actually proud of me. Like I feel like that's such a privilege to say it is, it and I'm is. very honored. So yeah, it's just to continue putting my community on like for real. And I do that cause of my parents, cause of everything Amen. they've gone through. Yeah. Like I'm the first generation of an American here in America. Like, let me put it on let me. Exactly. Let me show what my family did. Like, exactly. and the generations of people before them and all their other family and friends and us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a movement that I think like we couldn't be a part of without our family. It's like, yeah, the, the wisdom I have from my community is the reason I bring like a fresh perspective to the music I create here, so. Amen. Yeah, family, my parents are every, yeah. every part of this process. Absolutely. Do you ever get imposter syndrome and how do you deal with it? Lately, yeah, dude, I've been getting bad imposter syndrome. But you work your entire career to get recognition for your art. But you don't realize like once that starts happening, it shifts your perspective about the art itself. So recently I've gotten a lot of success for a song I released and it's everything I've ever wanted. It's like, oh my God, like it's on the charts, like millions of people are listening to it. I have all these new people anticipating my art and my music but I'm so used to working in a bubble and no one knowing about me and no one anticipating anything I'm making that it's I'm a switch. Yeah, I'm starting to question that like, oh, well, the stuff that I have coming, is it even going to be good enough now that this is the new standard? Like, am I really Girl. the artist that I think I am? And of course I am. They're not even ready. Like they've only gotten the tip of the iceberg of you. That's true. That's very true. But it's I think like when you see this amount of like, when you see numbers like that, it starts to feel very daunting and it becomes more than just the just art. the expectation. Yeah, yeah. So I do feel imposter syndrome in that regard, but I'm trying to dial it back and just focus on the art. 
Exactly. I think once you focus on the art and like block out all the noise outside of it, it's you start to feel more like yourself and you start to feel like an artist and not this personality that has to entertain and like please people from her music. Yeah, exactly. You might hate my shit. Like you might hate everything I put out after this song and that's fine because this is my journey and you may enjoy bits and pieces of it, you may not, but I can't force myself to cater to what you want from me. That helps me stay more grounded. Huh. Do you <laughs> feel imposter syndrome at all? Yes, but it's not, like what does that mean? Like, you know what I mean? What, what do you define imposter syndrome? For me, imposter syndrome means feeling like I'm not the person I'm presenting exactly, to the world. Exactly, exactly, yes. I feel like because we have to do it online, mostly, it's really, it gives me imposter syndrome because again, it's limiting, it's not fluid, it's not adaptable to people who are growing and changing. Like mm -hmm. you, once you start profiting off of something, a style, a look, you become that and that's what kind yeah. of carries you. And that's why I'm so, so, so tough on this idea that like you need this one single image to make it like yeah. or this like I feel like it's more about your story mm -hmm. and your story my story our stories are compelling and like we're going to feel imposter syndrome because I feel like we're doing something important yeah and things that haven't been done at the scale that we want them to be done like we're we are pioneers in our community so it does feel a little bit I'm like, are you sure? There's yeah. the imposter syndrome. Yeah, like yeah, even yeah. just saying, I'm like, are you sure? Like, I don't know what I'm doing like half the time, but because we're just doing ourselves unapologetically, we see the return. Like everyone says this, you can hear it like on those like life quotes, you know, I don't know, Rick Rubin, whoever, but it's like, as soon as you do it for yourself, you're doing it for the world. Like, you know what I mean? Wow. Like, it's like, it's not nice. about like, the imposter syndrome kicks in when you're doing it for the world. Yeah, that's When you very do it for true. yourself, you're already doing it that's for the world. That's very true. Like being your best version is the best version for other people, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. That was a great question. Yeah, that's, I think that's